Welcome to the Dell DOT training series on ADA compliance. This video provides an overview of the design of pedestrian street crossings. People traveling across accessible pedestrian routes, like sidewalks or shared use paths, eventually need to cross roads and streets. A pedestrian street crossing or crosswalk occurs where the pedestrian access route leaves the approach sidewalk or shared use path and enters the roadway. The crosswalk forms a continuous connection of the pedestrian access route from one side of the street to the other and extends across medians, pedestrian refuge islands, channelizing islands, and at-grade rail crossings. For safety reasons, crosswalks should be marked so they are visible and predictable to drivers and pedestrians. Marking crosswalks also conveys the design intent to the user for where they should walk. However, not every crosswalk is marked, and the presence of a crosswalk may not always be obvious. Sidewalks on both sides of an intersection is a strong indicator that the pedestrian access route extends across the street. Pedestrians will tend to cross at such a location. Where this occurs, it implies that a crosswalk exists, whether it is marked or not. If pedestrian crossing is prohibited at certain locations, the MUTCD regulatory sign, no pedestrian crossing, R9-3, may be used to warn pedestrians of the prohibition. Where crosswalks are clearly defined, the cross only at crosswalks, or R9-2 sign, may be used to discourage crossing at undesirable locations. The use crosswalk, or R9-3B supplemental plaque, along with an arrow, may be installed below either sign to direct pedestrians to the appropriate location to cross the street. The sign to the right is displayed along State Route 1 through Dewey Beach, where median fencing channel S's pedestrians to the crosswalks. While not MUTCD compliant, it does direct pedestrians to use the crosswalks provided and warns of a fine should they cross elsewhere. A marked crosswalk is meant to create a safe, predictable place for people to cross the street and is to be accessible to individuals with disabilities in accordance with the requirements and considerations in the Del Dot Pass Manual. Crosswalks are most often provided at signalized intersections, but may also be employed as a pedestrian safety feature at unsignalized intersections, where pedestrian volumes and motor vehicle traffic indicate the need for marked crosswalk, such as at this commercial entrance. Where unsignalized crossings occur in front of schools, crossing guards are used to supplement the signs and markings. They may also be installed at mid-block locations to improve pedestrian safety to places that people want to go but are not close to adjacent signalized intersections. All new mid-block crosswalks must be approved by the Del Dot traffic section. The crosswalk is the most dangerous part of the pedestrian network for the user. Stepping into the street runs the risk of crossing paths with oncoming traffic. Properly designed crosswalks are the key to improving safety for people as they negotiate the conflicting movements between pedestrians and motorists. Crosswalk markings, signs, and signals work in combination to create a context for drivers and pedestrians, which helps set the expectations, making each other's actions more predictable. To promote safe crossings, crosswalks must be designed to encourage pedestrian use in lieu of crossing at an unpredictable location, make pedestrians and motorists as visible as possible, make pedestrian actions as predictable as possible, and slow vehicular traffic. Ways to alert motorists to the possible presence of pedestrian activity at intersections include providing marked crosswalks in the roadway, curb extensions, also called bulb outs, to make pedestrians more visible, reduce the crossing distance and time of exposure to traffic, clear sight distances through the removal of extraneous curb side clutter, such as newspaper boxes, redundant utility poles, or overgrown vegetation, and accessible pedestrian signals. 
Illumination is also a key design consideration, especially where nighttime use is likely. Lighting should be installed in accordance with Del Dot's traffic lighting policy. Crosswalks should be aligned to make the street level crossing as nearly perpendicular as possible. Skewed crosswalks tend to lengthen the time to cross, increase the exposure time for pedestrians, reduce operational capacity of the intersection, and sometimes create additional accessibility challenges. However, many intersections do utilize a certain amount of skew. As a practical matter, skewing is often unavoidable. And some skewing of a crosswalk alignment is preferable to pushing crosswalks back from the intersection, which would lead to pedestrians crossing the intersection at locations unexpected or not visible to motorists. Pedestrian street crossings may include median or channelizing islands. Median and channelizing islands assist pedestrians in crossing the intersection by reducing the crossing distance from a curb to a protected area and can help align the user properly across the roadway. Crosswalks should follow a straight path. Users should not have to change direction in the middle of the street. If a kinked alignment is needed, run each straight line segment to a pedestrian refuge island to accommodate a turning maneuver. To discourage mid-block crossings, physical barriers such as grass strips, landscaping, planters, chains, fencing, railings, or other barriers can be used to channelize pedestrians to safer crossing locations. A good example of a physical barrier consisting of a decorative fence and landscaping can be found at the US 13 entrance to Delaware State University in Dover, seen here. The type of barrier used to physically separate or channelize pedestrians must be appropriate for the context of the site and vehicular roadside safety. It must be detectable for people who are visually impaired and it must conform to the concept of a forgiving roadside. See the Ashto Roadside Design Guide for further guidance on vehicular roadside safety and consult with Del Dot's traffic section on barrier selection. All traffic control devices used at crosswalks, such as pavement markings, signage, and signals, must conform to the Delaware MUTCD. The markings should be consistent for all crossings within the intersection. Consistency in markings helps guide pedestrians across the intersection. The markings also warn approaching motorists of the potential for pedestrians to cross at that location. Crosswalk width varies by application. The Delaware MUTCD contains the pertinent design criteria. In all cases, the street level pedestrian connection must be wholly contained within the width of the crosswalk. The running slope must not exceed 5%. Accordingly, the department prefers to design and lay out the crosswalk running slope to be 4.5% maximum. The required cross slope depends on the location of the crossing and the traffic control that is present. Where traffic must always slow or stop, as at a stop or yield sign, the maximum cross slope is 2%. Accordingly, the department has adopted a layout and design standard of 1.5%. Where traffic can sometimes proceed without slowing, such as at a signal with a green light phase, the maximum cross slope is 5%. Accordingly, the department has adopted a layout and design standard of 4.5%. At mid-block crossings, the cross slope may match the street grade. At pedestrian refuge islands, the width should be five foot minimum or match that with the approach pedestrian path if wider. Pinch points are not permitted. Additionally, the width for the pedestrian refuge island should be expanded an additional two feet up to a width of 10 feet along the whole pedestrian path length at locations where pedestrian push buttons are to be placed. Pedestrian refuge islands can be designed as either a cut through application or can be designed as a ramped application. The designer should consider the site's drainage to ensure positive drainage and the pedestrian access route's vertical alignment to avoid building small hills that create accessibility challenges. The department's preference is to provide a cut-through facility as the cut-through helps provide detectable edges for the user.
The surface of the street crossing is required to be firm, stable, and slip resistant. While brick pavers and decorative markings can add pleasing aesthetic treatments to crosswalks, consideration must be given to ensuring the surface is smooth and easy for wheeled mobility devices to roll across. Surfaces that are heavily textured will increase rolling resistance and may subject pedestrians who use wheeled mobility devices to vibration and discomfort. The street level pedestrian connections adjoining the crosswalk, such as curb ramps and blended transitions, are to be constructed of concrete to provide a smooth and easily traversable surface. For further information, there are three videos devoted to the ADA requirements and design considerations for pedestrian connections in this series of ADA training videos. Pedestrian signals can be used to coordinate the pedestrian's crossing relative to vehicular traffic. Additional information on the design of pedestrian signals is included in the department's ADA training video entitled Pedestrian Signals. We hope you found this video helpful. It provided an overview of the requirements for pedestrian street crossings. Please consult with DelDOT's ADA Title II coordinator for accessibility guidance on your project.